settling in foreign lands where to settle where to live is what we are going to discuss in today's video so first of all see there are few people who are not successful at their birthplace they are successful at other places a good example is albert einstein right because places have energies right that's why we have temples and other spiritual in a place other spiritual things at different places right so this nature is having forces and energies some of which are compatible to you and some of which are not compatible to you right so when you go to places which are compatible to you you have better chances of succeeding that's a basic point apart from that also sometimes you know because the direction is favorable for you people come from that directions and they help you as well so in my recent video on, on the series of planets i have talked about the different directions indicated by planet and how you can use those directions to find out the direction in which you will meet your life partner you will have your office and all of these things right now there these directions are used in even more extensive ways right and i have been teaching it since the starting right when just the time when i started teaching it i have been starting all of these things so thought to share it with you today so specifically focusing on the places where one should live or the place which will be suitable to the person specifically with regard to foreign countries people who are trying to or wanting to settle to foreign countries first of all you should see whether the going to foreign land is indicated or not for that there are two three principles that i employ first of all ascendant ascendant lord navamsh ascendant and ascendant lord in d9 these are four crucial factors if four of them all four of them goes into a movable sign it indicates that one will go to foreign lands right because movable sign indicates distance movement if they go into fixed signs it does indicate fixed signs it does indicate that one will live in their homeland living near homeland is indicated on the other hand when they go to dual signs it does indicate that one will go to foreign lands for work purpose and other thing but they will come back to their homeland you know that movable signs are aries cancer libra capricorn fixed rashis are taurus leo scorpio aquarius and dual rashis are gemini virgo sagittarius and pisces that's the first thing secondly if you are going to the foreign land you are leaving your homeland that is indicated by fourth house so fourth house should be afflicted in horoscope as well if the fourth house is not afflicted then one is not able to leave their homeland in this particular case one is either success, unsuccessful in foreign lands or they will have to come back with expiry of you know visa or permit and all of these things the afflictions will happen through malefic planets and inimical planets right malefic planets naturally malefic planets are there sun rahu saturn mars inimical planets inimical to the house lord right house have a rashi rashi lord basically we call it house lord that's one thing secondarily generally when one goes to foreign land they become separated from their family also right because one can go to foreign land with their spouse children parents but complete family which indicates everyone of course they cannot go with them this family is indicated by the second house so the second house should also be afflicted right that is another scenario in the case where one will settle to foreign lands the fourth house and second house have to be afflicted the lord of these houses have to be afflicted only then one will leave their family and their homeland this is important as compared to that one more set of thing is that lagna indicates the place you are born in ninth house indicates your father right and generally we call our father's place as our home fourth is already included and 10th house includes lineage right and your lineage belongs to a particular place so if the lagna is powerful 
because it indicates the birthplace, one remains in their birthplace only. Ninth house is powerful. One remains at the place where their father spent maximum of their time. And if the 10th house is very powerful, one lives at a place where their heredit, where their hereditary, where their lineage belongs to. So the strength of first house, ninth house, and tenth house significantly reduces the chances of foreign settlement. Also indicates that one will live at these places that I told, either in the homeland or at the place where their father spent their maximum time or at the place where their lineage belongs to. So in these particular cases, even if one goes to foreign land, they are not able to stay there for long and eventually they come back to their homeland, right? Apart from that, Lagna indicates the place you are born, 7th house indicates the place where you are not born. So generally when Lagna Lord is in the 7th house or 7th Lord is in the Lagna, it does indicate that one will live in foreign lands or one will be in constant travel. Now in this particular case, Lagna Lord in 7th house, 7th Lord in Lagna, I always say that it is a very good combination for good marital life and in these combinations, I have seen that despite a Despite life partner having a bad horoscope, these people, including their life partners, enjoy good marital life, right? This is more so when these people live in or are settled in foreign lands. Now, what is the concept of foreign land? The concept of foreign land is, for example, you say foreign land is 500 kilometers, 600 kilometers, 1000 kilometers. In that scenario, Uttarakhand Bihar shares their border with Nepal also. So in the bordering region, the border changes in some 5, 10, 15 kilometers. There in 5, 10, 15 kilometers also it is a foreign land. So astrologically, what you consider as a foreign land, right? That's the first question. So the place where you belong to, that place have some custom language type of people. Any place which differs from the custom language and type of people from your birthplace should be considered a foreign land. So North Indian in South India, South Indian in North India should also be considered as a foreign land. Of course, as I told earlier, movable signs indicate long distance. So movable signs will indicate foreign lands altogether. Dual signs will indicate shorter distance. So it will indicate North Indian in South India, South Indian in North India kind of set of fixed signs indicate the same place. So same place does not necessarily mean that one lives in the place where they are born in only, but either in the same state or in a neighboring state or in a place which have same type of people, food, language, ethnicity, like their birthplace, right? This is how it should be understood. In the first principle of movable, fixed and dual signs, out of the four factors, three factors are going into three or maximum of the factors going into movable, fixed or dual sign is our deciding factor, right? This you will have to keep in mind. Now, one more principle is there. One will go to foreign land. That is okay. But whether it is good to go to foreign land is another question. For that, you will have to see the Lagna Lord and the 12th house from the placement of Lagna Lord. So you have to compare the Rashi where the Lagna Lord is situated in, whether the Lagna Lord is good at that place, or if Lagna Lord moves to the 12th house from its current placement, it will be better. If Lagna Lord moving to 12th from its current placement will be better, then going to foreign land is good, otherwise not. For example, you say Lagna Lord is moon and moon is situated in Gemini. So moon is situated in Gemini, 12th from Gemini is Taurus and as moon goes to Taurus, he will become exalted. So for this person going to foreign land will be good, will be beneficial. He should go to foreign land, right? So regarding deciding that whether one will be fortunate in foreign land or not, whether one should go to foreign land or not, or the person will go to foreign land and will suffer there only, this particular principle of comparing between the current Rashi of the Lagna Lord and 12th Rashi therefrom is a very important factor. Now regarding the direction, which direction, which place, I have few considerations for it. But first of all, let's understand about directions clearly. Then we'll talk about it. Talking of directions, 
planetary directions east is indicated by sun south east is indicated by venus south is indicated by mars southwest is indicated by rahu take ketu also though ketu indicates the downward direction and upward direction but because you cannot travel downward or upward ketu i am also taking in southwest west is ruled by saturn northwest is ruled by moon north is ruled by mercury and northeast is ruled by jupiter these are planetary directions the uses of planetary direction first of all you will see the rashi occupied by the seventh lord and as per the direction of the lord of the rashi in which in that direction you are going to meet your life partner right this is how you are going to use it so when getting something is based on fortune right i will call it fortune direction or planetary direction when getting something is based on fortune such as meeting your life partner is a thing related to fortune you are going to use it remember the direction of the rashi lord of the seventh lord right so in this it is used uh, if you want to know in which direction your office will be you will use it you will see the rashi of the 10th lord right and the direction indicated by the lord of the rashi where 10th lord is situated in is the direction where your office will be i am not saying that you cannot have office in other directions i am saying that if you have office in other directions you will either quickly lose your job or you will not make much progress into it right because astrology is science related to fortune it's not like you follow astrology or you don't follow astrology you believe in astrology or you don't believe in astrology you will have to follow it otherwise things will not sustain right it is a super force super power kind of a thing which you cannot you know choose not to follow or not to believe in right it's not like that right so this is another thing that have to be understood apart from that the practical technical uses of this particular thing is that you when you go to the direction of the planet good for your horoscope you succeed in that particular direction that is the basic point right so for say you have to find the best planet of the horoscope right if when you go to the best planet the direction of the best planet of horoscope best thing happens to you so you go by this way you check your second house 11th house second lord 11th lord planets connected with them and you see the best planet the most beneficial or most powerful planet connected to second house second lord 11th house 11th lord you know these houses indicate finances so when you go to these directions your finances will be good because it is related to finances if you keep your locker in that particular direction it will be good people keep money in bank so if you are home branch of the bank is in that direction from your home it is good right in the same manner 10th house indicates profession so a planet positively connected to 10th house and 10th lord if you have your office in that particular direction if you sit in your office facing that direction or if you think of professional things facing that direction it will be good beneficial fortunate for you right so this is how you are going to use it apart from that in shadbal there is something known as digbal directional strength so mercury jupiter gets digbal in the ascendant and also in second house at 12th house mars jupiter gets digbal in the 10th house also little bit digbal in 9th house and 11th house ketu also gets digbal in 10th house is what you should take <clears throat> rahu and saturn gets digbal in the 7th house and also in 6th house and 8th moon venus gets digbal in 4th house and also in 3rd house and 5th house so as per the most digbali planet of the horoscope because dig means direction when you go to the direction of the most digbali planet in your horoscope you automatically get success because the best financial direction and the best professional direction can be different so you cannot compromise between good finances or good professional status you want both so for that we go for rajyogari planet because rajyog giving planet gives both the result but if one is not having a clear rajyog giving planet then in that particular scenario digbali planet is to be chosen now a basic point is that not every horoscope will have a digbali planet 
So the first approach of choosing the direction of the planet positively connected with financial factors for finances should be applied in every horoscope. But if in the horoscope there is a Digbali planet also, planet having directional strength as well as per the houses I have recommended, then the Digbali planet is to be chosen. Right? This is how it should be taken. That's the first basic point. So while settling to foreign countries also, right? If there is a question related to which country I should settle in, you go by these directions. If the Lagna is powerful, Lagna Lord is well placed, better to follow the direction of the Lagna Lord. If not, then a singular planet owning a Kendra and Kona. Kendra and Kona, every Kendra and Kona is not taken. Lagna Lord is always good that we have understood so far. In Kendra's 4th house and 10th house, in Kona 5th house and 9th house is taken. So if a singular planet is Lord of 4th house and 10th house, 4th house or 10th house and 5th house or 9th house, then it becomes the Rajyokari planet. Simply put, for the ascendant of Saturn, Aquarius, Capricorn, Venus is the Rajyokari planet. For the ascendant of Venus, Libra, Taurus, Saturn is the Rajyokari planet. For the ascendant of Sun, Moon, Right. Cancer Leo. Mars is the Rajyokari planet. And for the ascendant of Mars, Aries Scorpio, Sun, Moon are the Rajyokari planets. Right. So the direction of the Rajyokari planet can also be chosen. But you see, first of all, Rajyokari planet is not there for every ascendant. Point one. Secondarily, not every person is recommended to go to foreign lands and live at different places. Regarding the direction of the Lagna Lord, you can only choose the direction when Lagna is powerful. Lagna Lord is making good yogas, otherwise not. Digbali planet, if you have a Digbali planet, you will follow the direction of the Digbali planet. Otherwise, you will go by the concept of which planet is good for finances, which planet is good for marriage, which planet is good for profession, etc. So, if it comes to going to a foreign land, you can choose a country in this particular direction also. My cons my belief, first of all, you will choose this country from your birth country. So if you are an Indian, you will choose countries in these directions from India. That's the basic point. Apart from that, my concept is also simple. You will see where you are getting opportunities as well, right? I don't want to precisely tell you go to this country. For example, you see, going to East, Eastern countries, you know, from India, I suppose, if I tell you go to Singapore. Now, you see, you are, are having a particular type of professional skill. If that professional skill will not get good, will not get you a good job in Singapore, then how you can go to Singapore or why you should go to Singapore, right? That's, that is also something that have to be understood. If I tell you to go to somewhere in the Northeast direction, you will not go to Mongolia, right? If you are not having a skill, which is valued in Mongolia. So I believe that a practical approach should also be taken that I have given a particular direction. Now, as per the country where you will get an easy employment, where settling is easy, where you will feel comfortable, where your skill is valued, you will choose that country. For this particular reason, I don't specifically recommend a particular thing. For an example, if someone have done their masters with history, I cannot say them looking at Rahu in their 10th house that you should become a pilot. Someone who have done masters in history, how they can become a pilot. Right? So a practical scope you will have to leave. Right? When you practice astrology, when you look at horoscope, when you have some real con consultation experience, you understand this particular point. Right? So this is one thing that I have explained to you. You should go to this particular direction. Now in that particular direction also, for example, you go to yeah. For a particular example, I told you that you should go to south from India. In that south, you go to Australia. 
right or rather southeast you go to australia now in this australia to because southeast direction is good for you in this australia you can go to southeastern part of australia in that southeastern part you can live in a home which is having south or east or southeastern entry right you can work while facing southeastern direction so this direction you have to employ as much as you can for example someone who is having a well settled business in india itself if a particular direction is favorable for them i cannot say them go out of india because they are having a well settled business or profession in india in that particular scenario the employment of the direction should be with respect to the facing of the house the facing of you when you are thinking something or doing some important work right so astrology is a way of living right astrological advices are intended to make you fortunate you have to aspire to apply them as much as possible keeping in mind your current scenario is the basic point that i am trying to make right understand this a planet positively connected to the fourth house take the direction of the planet and if you choose to live in a house who is having their main gate in that particular direction then because fourth house on also indicates happiness comfort contentment enjoyment these things you will get from your home that's why astrology is a super science i have told it earlier also because the significations in astrology complement each other fourth house indicate home and fourth house indicate happiness contentment satisfaction also and this is exactly what you want from your home you see the superior understanding and intellect of our sages now many people are confused how to know your home is which direction facing stand at the center of home keep a compass in your hand and then you see in which direction your gate is falling that is the direction of your gate you don't see the direction of the gate by standing behind gate or in front of gate you stand at the center of the house and mark directions there from right this is how it is done you are an indian you stand at the center of india and from there you take the directions right this is how you do it i think this point is clearly understood these are only planetary directions by the way there are three other type of directions as well probably people don't know about it i will tell you this is a south indian horoscope yeah these two rashis are aries taurus this is gemini this is cancer this is leo this is virgo this is libra this is scorpio this is sagittarius this is capricorn this is aquarius this is pisces it is called sthir chakram fixed chakra now aries taurus indicates east direction cancer leo indicates south direction scorpio libra indicates west direction aquarius capricorn indicates north direction so gemini automatically becomes southeast Virgo becomes a southwest, Sagittarius becomes a northwest, and Pisces becomes a northeast. This is what this is. Third chakra. Third chakra means fixed chakra. In Ashtamangal Prashna, this is made at the ground, and a boy or a girl who does not know much about astrology is told to place a coin at any in any box. Based on the box, they place the coin or any marking in. the arud is chosen so this is fixed chakra or rather you say bhu chakra now go to the rashi you have chosen the direct where to use it because basic thing is that astrology gives you many options and the problem in today's world is people don't know how to use that how to use the direction how to use the different things in astrology properly people don't know either they take one opinion because of some reason god knows or they only know about one thing that's the problem so we have found the major direction based on the planet but you say no planet is good in your horoscope right no planet is good in your horoscope only rashis are good in that scenario what you will do you will go by rashi directions regarding rashi rashi in the ascendant 5000 9000 is always beneficial 4000 10000 rashis are also good <laughs> right so this is the basic point and secondarily more than that you use it for mixture 
भू चक्रा और फिक्सड चक्रा इज फॉर द प्लेस सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू से मार्स इज अ वेरी गुड प्लैनेट इन योर हॉरोस्कोप यू हैव मार्स इज अ वेरी गुड प्लैनेट इन योर हॉरोस्कोप यू हैव चोजन द सदर्न डायरेक्शन सो यू सेटल्ड इन द सदर्न डायरेक्शन राइट सो यू से यू आर बॉर्न इन नॉर्थ इंडिया यू सेटल इन साउथ इंडिया इन दैट साउथ इंडिया यू हैव चोजन अ पर्टिकुलर स्टेट राइट से एनी स्टेट यू हैव चोजन रिगार्डिंग द स्टेट एंड रिगार्डिंग द कंट्री फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल फर्स्ट ओपिनियन आई टोल्ड यू यू विल वॉन्ट टू चूज द प्लेस वेर देर इज मोर वर्क फॉर योर टाइप ऑफ स्किल एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट एंड आई टी प्रोफेशनल बेटर गो टू बैंगलोर राइट एंड अदर सच टेगी एरियाज राइट बैंगलोर हैदराबाद चेन्नई दीज प्लेसेज विल बी गुड एज कंपेयर टू गोइंग टू अदर प्लेसेज राइट अदर प्लेसेज आई डोट वॉन्ट नेम राइट एज गोइंग टू अदर प्लेसेज सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल दिस बेसिक थिंग यू विल कीप इन माइंड Apart from that, see the place is having a popular name, right? So you can check compatibility with the place also. You go to my website shivamalak dot com. You go to blogs. In this blogs, you will find an article Ashtamangal Rog Prashna. In this Ashtamangal Rog Prashna, there is this particular table. So, for example, you are going to Bangalore. Bangalore starts from the letter B or B. If you find this particular letter, you find that B comes into Aquarius. So, people who are having a good Aquarius will do good in Bangalore. Otherwise, you wanted to go to Chennai. Chennai comes from the letter Ch. So, for that Ch, if you see into this particular table. There is Cha. Cha is in Libra. So people having a good Libra should go to Chennai. So compatibility with the compatibility with the Rashi. Chennai falls in Libra. Now, if Libra is a good Rashi in your horoscope, you can go to Chennai, and you have to make sure. That Libra is not six, eight, twelve from your ascendant or moons because six, eight, twelve houses are not good. Apart from that, Libra Rashi should having a good Rajio. That means good Rajio making planet, strong planets are situated in Libra or the Lord of Libra. Venus is good and beneficial in your horoscope. So based on that, you will choose a place that you have chosen Chennai. Now where in Chennai? So this Bhu Chakra when you are doing home vastu. or in prashna when you have to find where the thing is buried where the thing is laid where the foundation should be done or if you are digging the ground to find water and for all of these purposes when you have already found the place and in that place you will have to do something for example you know that you are going to chennai but the question is where in chennai suppose that is one point in prashna if you know that something is buried in the ground where it is buried in the ground right if someone is going to dig well where you should dig the well where you will find the water for these purposes this particular direction is used right so considering that libra is very good for you right because of which you are going to chennai in that western direction is good because western direction is indicated by libra or secondarily only one rashi will not be good so say libra is good and taurus is also good so you want to activate taurus as well right? because as i told you earlier planet good for profession and planet good for money you don't want one you want both of them you want money also and you want good professional status as well so you will have to activate both so say libra is good you have chosen the city name from libra venus is good so you have chosen south eastern direction as a direction in which you will go to now you want to activate taurus as well so in the place of libra right you choose the direction of taurus you choose the eastern direction to be there right so whenever it is about a small space right and you want to find in that space right in the city you want to find where in the state you want to find where in the country you want to find where 
in the office you want to find you have already have the office now you are finding where to sit in the office you will use this table so on the bigger level of the world and countries you go to planetary directions and at a finer level you go to this particular table this is called fixed chakra or bhu chakra bhu chakra bhu means ground chakra made on the ground and the chakra in the sky which is ever moving where the ascendant is always changing is called bha chakra bha means sky and right? so bha chakra of the sky which is constantly moving bhu chakra of the earth which is fixed the first rashi is always aries it is fixed the ascendant keeps on moving in the south indian chart the rashi is remain fixed because rashi is are fixed it is bhu chakra in bha chakra in zodiac of the sky ascendant remains constant the rashi in the ascendant keeps on moving that's why that is moving chakra the difference between bhu chakra and bha chakra have to be understood right bha chakra also means zodiac it comes from the root word of bha chakra bha means moving another thing is there trinal directions these trinal directions are based on rashis actually so first house fifth house and ninth house or aries leo sagittarius indicates east direction taurus virgo capricorn indicates a south direction gemini libra aquarius indicates west direction and cancer scorpio pisces indicates north direction these are based on trinal directions now one thing is there that you should understand that there is no card there is no conic directions into it right south east south west north east north west is not here these are four cardinal or main directions and these are based on trines also this is used in while placing things while placing things in house while keeping things in house this is used for example if you want to place your bedroom check the horoscope from venus this is primarily used with respect to ashtak varg right so you make the ashtak varg of venus add the points aries leo sagittarius rashi is getting taurus varg of capricorn rashi is getting gemini libra aquarius rashi is getting cancer scorpio pisces rashi is getting total number of points all these three rashis of the four set is getting whichever set is getting maximum number of point because venus indicates bedroom your bedroom should be in that direction so while placing non living objects this is to be used right this trinal directions is to be used when something is to come from fortune for example in which direction to search for your spouse you will have to search for your spouse you will go to the direction indicated by the rashi lord of the seventh lord right now the point is that someone will come to you to give something they will come to you to give something they will come from which direction they will come from this direction they will come from the fortune direction they will come understood so these are the two purpose of these these two directions now what i call solar directions let me tell you a little bit about calculation of astrology at the time of sunrise on 14th of april sun will go into aries 0 degree 14th of may sun will go to taurus 0 degree from this 14th of april to 14th of may for the 30 days sun will be increasing 1 degree each day so 0 degree aries on 14th april 1 degree aries on 15th april so on and so forth so in 365 days sun will cross 360 degrees of the zodiac and on 14th april again 0 degree aries sun will come to now at the time of sunrise 
the sun will be at ascendant. So you say on 14th April, sun is at zero degree Aries and ascendant will also be zero degree Aries, where sun will also be situated there. Now, one thing you have to understand that there will be 24 hours in a day and sun will have to cross 12 Rashis in that 24 hours because in the next day, sun will be in the ascendant in the same sign, one degree advanced. So 24 hours in a day and 12 ascendants have to pass. So one ascendant will pass in two hours. Now, because one ascendant is having 30 degrees and it have to pass in two hours, two hours, one hour is 60 minutes, two hours will be 120 minutes and it will have to cross 30 degrees. So four. Right. In four minutes, one degree of the ascendant will be crossed. This is basic calculation. So at the time of sunrise on 14th of April, sun will be at zero degree of Aries in the ascendant. In four minutes, one degree will pass and in two hours, sun will go to 12th house. Then sun will go to 11th house and in the afternoon, sun will come to the 10th house. Then in the evening, Sun will come to the seventh house in the midnight. Sun will come to the fourth house and in morning sun will again go to ascendant. Now in the morning sun goes to ascendant and sun remains in eastern direction. In afternoon sun goes to the tenth house where sun remains in the southern direction. In evening sun goes to western direction. Uh, sun goes to western direction. So seventh house is west and in midnight it is told that sun have gone to northern direction. So fourth house is north. Because first house is east and the 10th house is south, 11th and 12th houses are southeast. Because 10th house is south and 7th house is west, 8th and 9th houses are southwest. Because 4th house is north and 7th house is west, 5th and 6th houses are northwest. And because Lagna is east and 4th house is north, 2nd and 3rd houses are northeast. Right? These are Directions based on sun's movement. Right. Or rather say house based direction. This have nothing to do with Rashi. So if there is a good combination being made on the being made in the horoscope based on houses better to follow this particular direction. For example, you say Lagna Lord is going into 6th house, not a good setup. But this Lagna Lord is a malefic. Lagna Lord is a malefic. Now malefic in 6th house is very good, but because this Lagna Lord is in the 6th house, you cannot follow the direction of the Lagna Lord as such. This 6th house is a Rashi which is only friendly to Lagna Lord. Friendly Rashi is not very good, but still you want to follow some direction. Lagna Lord in 6th house being a malefic. Malefic in the 6th house is very good. Follow the direction of the 6th house northwest. Right. So this is house based direction and whenever the result is indicated by the house, it have to be the house based direction is to be used. The event is indicated by directions. A good result is indicated by house. Use the direction based on the house. The event is indicated by the house. The event will happen in the direction of the house or the event will come from the direction of the house. Right. This is also to be understood. Right. One more thing is there. The first setup where planets are indicating directions, Jupiter indicating north is sun indicating east. It is called plow. Plow means easily achievable, very easy to rule, very easy to control. So this direction gives you quick success. This fixed direction, so Bha Chakra, you say someone is having a bad combination in Libra Rashi. Right? You say Libra Rashi is having a combination related to so this trinal direction. Let's talk about trinal direction first. Say a bad combination is happening in Libra Rashi, a combination for theft is happening in Libra Rashi. What I wrote in it, these directions indicate fortune. So a bad combination, combination for theft is happening in Libra Rashi when the theft will happen when you travel to west direction. Why? Because Libra indicates west direction. Right. Bha Chakra is related to changes at the particular place. For example, say there is a combination for catching fire in the house. 
which direction will catch fire from the ba chakra you will find it out house will catch fire that is there but which direction in the house which room in the house will catch fire this direction you will have to use and lastly when it comes to the direction related to houses these are the directions so total there are four type of directions in vedic astrology and one should use them accordingly according to the place where they should be used now one thing is there 80% of the astrologers don't know there are four type of directions god save them those who know don't know how to use these directions so they either make one favorite direction which they always use or something like that so if someone is doing something because of lack of knowledge i don't know what to say i will tell you one thing that four type of directions are told in vedic astrology you will learn about these four directions it is bit natural to be confused you will think that why four type of directions are mentioned and all of that sometimes you will also think that it is contradictory understand one thing in astrology nothing is contradictory if four or five different opinions are there they all work on different level they all work in a different type they all work in a different way that way you will have to understand because in astrology there is no contradiction at all if two three opinions are there classically supported opinions not the opinions of people who do not know astrology but say anything if there are four five classical opinions which seems to be contradictory understand that is nothing contradictory you don't know how to use it why you don't know how to use it because you are not traditionally learned so first traditionally learn right thank you for watching the video i believe that the concept of which country where should go to or which direction is favorable will become very clear to you right so in a nutshell first of all you check whether there is a combination for going to foreign land or not then you check whether going to foreign land will be favorable fortunate or not then based on planetary directions find the direction of the direction where you should go then based on the bhu chakra you find where in the city or country you should settle in right based on that you can find a good place either in the world or in the country or in the same city or state where you are living and as i told in the starting astrology is science related to fortune there is no question of believing into it or not believing into it you will have to synchronize with fortune as you do things indicated by planet in your horoscope you become more fortunate your life becomes easy happy contented satisfied successful this is the purpose of astrology use it for your benefit and reap the good results thank you